Hello everyone, it's Cheryl Millette here live at 5 Mondays on Facebook and it's all about all things healthy. So it could come up with many different things could come into play when we think of health. Even the environment comes into play uh, when we think of health. So what am I going to talk to today? Let me just explore my notes here, just kind of got in quickly. Uh, part of it is, let's see, ah, wow, okay, so much. You know, that again, I can't stress enough just how many things crop up in a week to talk about. And it's clear that uh, the keto diet is maybe so, you know, very valuable in the early stages of losing weight. Uh, but definitely don't want to get down to that leanest part of weight. I'm still exploring with people who are very keen to do it, and I'm just able to express to them what uh, keto may and may not be in the in the long run, but in the short run, uh, very, very, very positive. Uh, extremely positive, but uh, the idea still would be that stress causes the body to burn carbs and a certain uh, you know, abundance of aerobic exercise or stress would actually have you craving carbs, but the vegetables can be considered the carbs, so in that case I would just say you know, you're going to alternate some, some time and include vegetables and even certain fruits uh, as well, be it berries, um, even apple. I'm very, very uh, pro apple. That would be very good. So in, the, in a lot of cases, let's carry on here and see what we have today. Uh, one of the things I wanted to bring up is definitely walking for our better health. A walking has a tremendous amount of benefits and can surely be used for many different reasons. Walking can be used for clearing the head, uh, letting out some steam, uh, moving the circulation, uh, circulatory system, circulation, I include lymphatic system, or the lymph as well, which is actually very pro-detoxification, which is really great. Uh, now, today's the big day, I guess, voting for Canada. You know, for all those people that come on board here uh, for for voting, it's a big voting day. So I didn't really expect uh, what would happen today anyway when it comes for numbers. But hello, everyone. And it's voting. So who do you vote for? I mean, that's probably a big thing on people's minds over the past week or even the past couple of days, past weekend, even today. And I don't, I don't mind sharing who I voted for, um, you know, the People's Party. I didn't really, you know, the certain things that were said about them that I didn't believe. And then I, of course, hear last week that it was, <clears throat> it was all a setup. You know, why, why, I mean, politics are definitely not immune to nastiness or to be, cunning or to be deceiving. Uh, we already know that there's other things that are involved with with our country and the leaders of our country. And I don't, I don't want to say any, people will do anything to, to be in power. I think some people are probably more generally and, and under, knowing, you know, kind of what to do for the country. But definitely fiscal responsibility, I think, is huge up there. Uh, as we all should be, and in a lot of ways. Actually, I was talking to a guy today, and he works at where I work, uh, but not the same company. Another company gives many different companies in this fashion center. And we were talking about material materialism, um, being materialistic, but he's in the fashion industry, and he was even saying just how much clothes people buy and how much they you know they don't use it so we got started by recycling because he was throwing out something and I was asking him is there a place to throw out you know the garbage if need be 
at because the clean ladies only come in once a month and anyway that's how we got on to it and all this waste so I think a lot of things that can happen with uh, with just within the community within the city within the country within anywhere places around the world is to personally take responsibility for some of the things and that starts off with that polluting that starts off with excess that starts off with um, you know just managing food I mean how much food gets thrown out and it I can really relate to those people who are actually out there and they are throwing out food but it's it's definitely something you have to absolutely consciously say you're gonna do and it it's taken me years to learn one not to buy too much at uh, two to eat up what needs to be eat up first not what you just like and three how to preserve the foods that we buy so that they last longer or they're fresher longer and celery as you can see from some of the posts celery was something that that is is one of those things and I put it in the blog post you can see it down below this this is one of the foods celery uh, all the vegetables the lettuces I've learned that the lettuce or anything washing them if you're not going to use them right away then washing them is not a good thing uh, be it that goes for lettuce especially and then uh, things like ca uh, carrots can be left in the bag but I've learned that it is very important to actually air out the fridge. So you know, sometimes you know you have the fridge, you open it, you open it, close it, and people say, "Don't open and close the fridge a lot," or you know, close the fridge right away. But I'm going to say that the fridge, you know, I actually welcome opening the fridge and making sure that it has the open and close, open and close, and has a fresh fresh air that's kind of coming in, you know, keeping it from being stagnant, which is where molds and stuff will grow. And of course, keeping things, everything in some some sort of a container, uh, especially those foods in your fridge that would be susceptible to mold, mold, but airing out of the fridge, you know, quite often we're so hard on ourselves. And I remember as a child and of course, but, but I'm feeling now that if you think of cold storage, you think of those places, they're not as cold as we keep the fridge today. In fact, keeping the fridge cold for me means my raw milk lasts that much longer. So I do have it on cold. But opening and closing the fridge door multiple times throughout the day will actually give some some air, some fresh air, some clean air. It wouldn't have it stagnant. And for most vegetables, just kind of uh, what I've uncovered over several years or more, is not to have them sealed tight. So, for example, uh, carrots and yak. I mean, keep the bag open slightly, just kind of fold it. Even I find that with lettuce. If you if you see the greens bag or the salad greens bag, quite often the ones that are for that have all these little fine holes in it. When I do my lettuce and I kind of put it in a bag, I I don't even seal it up all the way, and sometimes I just kind of fold it over a little bit. So I really feel that this introduction of air into the fridge, into the bags of things, that when you actually just leave things for any length of time and they just kind of sit there and the mold starts or something like that, they get kind of stagnant because they're just so sealed tight. It's, it's the same with a lot of other things. Um, we need air, flow of air, and even for plants, even for sprouts. One of the most important thing is, is not to put too many seeds in the tray and that's just because you want the circulation going through and you want to put fresh water in all the time like a river would be flowing or a waterfall would be flowing. And the other thing I wanted to, hello Dennis, uh, the thing I wanted to talk about is this whole climate change. I've kind of mentioned it before, the idea of how would I say it? The idea of, of really getting up in arms about anything. And so climate change kind of just stepping back. I went to a lecture on Saturday and there was a lady, she's from Ireland, but she's li lived here for a long time with her husband. But she has 
uh, you know, something, a degree in botany, a degree in biochemistry, and some other things as well. But she's very much into the the holistic part of all of that, the holistic part of science even, as a scientist herself, and having done all that she's done, she really kind of put it out in the line of climate change. And this is what I'm just going to share with you, what she shared as her bio plan. But really, it's a message, I think, for everyone on this planet. Uh, simply from a science standpoint, the leaves of the trees are very important. Some maybe more than others, and we can surely use the leaves, the pine needles for healing, healing properties. A lot of things around trees that are, are actually healing. And I'll share more as I learn more because, see if I can show this book title. So I, I did buy one of Diana Beresford's, oh, I don't know. It's this white scenario. But it's uh, Diana Beresford Kruger, um, and the sweetness of a simple life. I just started reading it this morning, but here's the bio plan for the trees. And this is how we can think about it, and how she had everybody in the room thinking about it, is that if everybody planted one tree for the next six years, that would make a huge difference on the, the air quality, the atmosphere, that kind of thing. I think it's important that we we get an education more on what she's talking about, you know, and the importance of the tree. And eh, and I'll share this with a lot of people. I mean, I don't think there's too many people in the world. We have so much land and so much land we can plant trees. Even here in Toronto, uh, I think their initiative was four million trees. So obviously trees fall down and the older trees, and so we've got to replenish those older trees and there might be more older trees and maybe that's where the four million trees comes in but it's also important to to let the trees that take root naturally grow instead of all this transplanting and I've done that with a with a with an oak tree in in the front yard I've got a couple of oaks there already but there's some benefit to a tree and its strength and its and its um, health if the tree, if you plant the actual nut, let's say an acorn in one case or a black walnut uh, and these other trees as well. Uh, pine cones, I've seen that recently where you can grab a pine cone, put it in some soil and just keep watering it and the seeds that are all around in this pine cone actually sprout up. So you, it looks really cool if you can find it on YouTube. Maybe I'll I'll look it up and, and put it down. But it's really cool. So that's what I, I mean. Climate change, yes, we have the voting today. And, you know, that's a decision and a half because I surely don't want to vote for another party just because I don't want the other party in. That was some of the jokes that were kind of spreading around, which is, okay, you hate the liberals, so vote conservative. You hate the conservatives, so you vote liberals. At the end of the day, um, we really, it's another education piece, you know, educate ourselves enough on politics so we can make a choice. I prefer, I've heard enough now from Max Bernier that I think he's a good candidate, and I'm kind of ignoring the other stuff. Uh, the idea is that already, I think it was the Conservative Party, got caught, and it might have been on the news, you might have seen on the news, I haven't had time to watch the news, but they got caught, to, um, setting up the play where the People's Party, uh, Max got called, uh, you know, as racism, and I didn't see it anywhere, but they got caught. They actually paid somebody some money to set this all up and to however they do. It's not difficult. I think I said something to my daughter, and she immediately believed it. I mean, it's not difficult for us to say something and people believe it. And if people say certain things, we're just assuming they know what's going on or assuming that they heard it from the news, which is assuming the news is correct, which is assuming the media and the newspapers are correct. Really, I mean, if we respect anything or we just choose to be so, how can I say it? 
not gullible or naive, but just want to think that nobody's going to lie to us and spread rumors or spread lies or cause issues. But it happens. I mean, it's coming out more and more that this is happening. And it's it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. So that's uh, so that's more and more about discerning what we're reading, what we're hearing, and to actually ask the questions. Where did you hear that? I mean, we don't have to, you know, come hard on anybody or dump on anybody or, or whatever. It's not there. You know, we just all got to come together here. But the idea is ask the questions. Where did it come from? Where did you hear it? We don't necessarily have to believe everything we hear. We can take in the information. It's just there. Do our own research. Know that science has its dark side as well as its light side. It has both. And even then, scientists will say that, as I mentioned before, things are, they feel that even when they come together and give information, and in the title it says blah, 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 if you read the fine print, it's more about may, uh, possibly, you know, those kind of language that's used in there. They like to hope that they can influence people and make, um, make changes. But I don't think it's as clear cut as that because each and every one of us physically is different. The amounts of stress we have, the beliefs that we have, our body, uh, just even what you're born with your DNA. I wouldn't put all your eggs in that basket with DNA or with genetics because even if you do your research and you actually do your research on that genome project, which I put in my book, the idea is everybody understood and were so excited that they were going to uncover all of these genes that were the cause of diseases and really what they discovered is we were closer in our in our genome to the protein sequencing sequencing um, to a insect to a a mouse to a rat to a rabbit and that goes to show that in a lot of cases there may be more that they can't see. I mean at one, once upon a time they couldn't even see the germ and when people, a lot of women were dying in the hospital at childbirth, when doctors would go from the autopsy to uh, giving birth or you know a, person, a lady giving birth and they were touching and stuff, a lot of them died of infection in the womb. They call it sepsis because it's a great avenue to ca catch things. For 50 years, they denied that it was that, even though one doctor proved it. He had everybody wash their hands. And when they did that, I think it, the, the death rate of women in the hospital dying from childbirth went down 90 some odd percent. But you see, back then at that time, before germ was recognized, a lot of women still gave birth at home. And so the downside is, you know, the people who had the money, who could afford the hospitals and wanted that luxury, uh, they're the ones who suffered. I mean, you might remember the movies, many of the old movies, because this isn't too, too long ago, where in the movie, the father's raising the daughter or raising the children because the mother died in childbirth. And they were really taking that story from something that really happened. That was the dynamics that was actually happening in real life. And they brought that in to many of the movies. So you can see how uh, how things can get with science that if they don't they don't know how can they know what they don't know they explore what they explore they observe what they observe they kind of get what they get and really we just gotta constantly pay attention and I mean my personal opinion on all these medications is their chemicals they may start off as as something that they kind of got from trees, but then they chemical uh, mass produce it, synthetically produce it, and people wonder why they have all kinds of side effects. It's really common sense. We're going to have side effects from something our body doesn't like, and that would be all the medicines. And they don't know what happens with a person who's taking three, four, five, I had one client who had 19 meds. Uh, she actually allowed me to, to scan the document so I have it for my, for, in her file. 
but 19 medications. And her thing was, I'm going to do anything the doctor tells me because he knows best. But the doctor isn't taught nutrition, not, not, let alone many of these other things. But they're not all doctors are in the same, they're not in the same boat when it comes to treating people. And I surely heard about a story recently, somebody that came here, and this was probably decades ago, and they refused to give them drugs. I can't remember if it was a male or a female. I think it was a female. Refused to give her client drugs that she actually needed to change her diet and her lifestyle. And I'd say, oh, I know who it is now. Uh, my friend, Carol. So she went through, and she was very, uh, not very well, not sleeping at all, and all of those things. And she wanted the pills, the drugs, and the doctor wouldn't give it to her. And today, she did become a holistic nutritionist, is how I know her, and a practitioner. And she's so grateful for that because that really gave her a kick in the pants because the doctor wasn't going to give her meds. So she had to explore to try other things before that would happen. It was very important for us to question, uh, question all that we're doing and be inspired and motivated to, as much as possible, engage in healthier lifestyle, even before you come off the meds, if you're on any meds. Just incorporate many healthy things. If you need help, that's why I'm here. The idea is to really scale in certain things and set up that habit before you actually come off any meds. That would be much more elegant in, in the way we can do things. So that's really all I wanted to do. Again, the bio plan from a lecture that I got on Saturday is if each of us planted a tree for the next six years, that would make a huge impact. Now, this is a scientist and a botanist and a biochemist, and so she's done lots of research, and I, and I got to speak with her really briefly about trees, uh, and she surely shared enough that I understand where she's coming from. She's coming from a very good place. Really, the message is just plant trees, man. If you want to plant 10 trees in the year, plant 10 trees in the year. But to plant trees seems like that's as simple as it is. This climate change uproar or da 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 is as simple as try not to pollute, really. It's the simple things that we can do. And uh, plant trees somehow just get into the habit of planting trees. And the whole climate change thing will go away. Because that's going to help the water, it's going to help the sea, it's going to help the air, it's going to help um, filter. It's Because uh, even each and every one of us, as we breathe in, we're filtering when we detox. I mean, there's, there's something that, that we absolutely can do. And of course, if it gets too much in a shorter period of time or accumulates, like certain things like mercury, certain things do accumulate, then that's where we can have our own health issues. But definitely, we're helping to filter the air by breathing in the air. You know, it's really as crazy as that. So you want to make sure you have a decent, healthy lifestyle so you can do that well and not be affected by it. And there's absolutely ways to, um, you know, avoid cancer, prevent cancer, um, even come back from cancer and because it has there's many stories out there diabetes type 2 diabetes absolutely absolutely where there's a will there's a way so really willingness will be your first step is to be willing to uh, to entertain that is a possibility to actually have that happen so if our cavity can disappear if potentially a finger can grow back if Potentially, we have stem cells in every part of our body, not just where they locate them, but that actually these stem cells can actually produce where needed. And that's a little bit of a different take on what we were hearing. So there's so much. I mean, there's really so much out there that would be uh, inspiring and motivating. And I think it's just tapping into what is already known and what exists. Okay, Shadow. Yeah, Mr. Doggy here. 
All right, so I'm going to end uh, live at five here. Here, I know. Shadow. No more barking. Hey. Okay, it's not going to stop. But anyway, uh, I want to wish everybody a healthy week. Now he'll grumble that I told him to be quiet. Now, listen, you don't get the last bark. I get the last bark. Uh, so everybody have a great evening. Uh, get out there and, and vote and make a difference with planting trees, plants, bushes. I think they're all good at the end of the day. And uh, have a good week, healthy week. Take care, and I will see you next Monday live at 5. Any questions, any questions, feel free to post them. Hello. I, know, I hope I'm saying your name right, Munir. Um, hello. Hello, everyone. So the great thing is, is there's hope. So have hope no matter what and actually be inspired or motivated. But I think it becomes with, starts off with willingness and it also comes with the education. And there's that, it's that huge piece called education. Uh, I know for me, any practitioner shouldn't shy away from actually educating people about what they know. I'm really big advocate for teaching people to do their own things. You know, as they say that uh, teach, you know, give a person a fish and feed them for a day, but teach them how to fish and they'll be able to feed themselves for a lifetime. And I think that's extremely important. I think we should ask for that with when it comes to learning anything to do with our health, our, our life, um, work, business, there's no bad questions. So feel free to put any questions below, any comments, any questions, any comments. I'll try to remember to post the link for YouTube where all the other videos are, uh, all the past videos, because I think it's much easier than filtering through the Facebook, but maybe not, maybe not. It might be easier to just click on videos and you can see all the videos there, but I am putting them there anyway. So take care, everyone. Thanks for coming on board. And uh, feel free to share anything that I'm sharing. Doesn't even have to say, oh, Cheryl said, just, and do your research. You know, do your own re research that way. But I'm going to continue to read this book, and uh, A Sweetness of a Simple Life with Diana Beresford Kruger. Uh, she's got a great movie out regarding the forest. But, uh, you know, this is tips for healthier, happier, and kinder living from a visionary natural scientist. So there you go, another, another word I learned or title, you know, natural scientist. So that's kind of cool. So as I learn more about the trees and things to do that we can help our planet and help ourselves, uh, I will absolutely share it here at Live at Five. So take care, everyone, again. Best of health. See you next week. Bye for now.